what is up and welcome to today's video if you don't know me my name is rosa and on this channel i create reselling type content but once a month i do something like this called my wrap up of the month so we're going to talk everything non-reseller in this video i usually talk about my wrap ups where i read a ton of books outside of reselling which i love today we're going to talk about my favorites for the month of march and my reading wrap up as well. I love reading, I love books, and I love to talk about them with you guys just in case some of you are also reading on top of reselling because we gotta do something else besides reselling to keep ourselves occupied. And for me, it's two things, reading and gaming. And so let's go right into it. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I always talk about the books that I read first, then we go into fan fiction, and then we go into my favorites, and I have it all in front of me here. So let's go ahead and talk about the very first book that I read in the month of March. And I have a paper right here to tell me everything about it because I forget everything. So the first book that I read in the month of March is The Seller by Natasha Preston. This book is a thriller about a girl who gets kidnapped by this guy who kidnapped three other girls because he wants his perfect flowers they all use fake names the girl that he kidnaps is named summer but he renames her as lily and um there's lily violet rose and poppy and the four of them live in a cellar and that's what the story is about this uh book was very fun but i did not i mean it was like okay like I gave it, how many stars did I give? I gave it a three star because it, was, it wasn't it was my favorite type of writing. My favorite type of writing is really, really descriptive. I'm gonna talk about it at the end of this video. Um, and I love really descriptive lyrical writing. This was just like, this person went to here and this person went to there. And this person had blonde hair and this person had blue eyes. But I tried to put some more detail in it, but I really didn't do anything about it. This is a young adult as well um and i didn't realize it but she has like a ton of books i picked this one up at goodwill because it looked kind of fun and that's what it looks like if you're interested and yeah so let's go through the stats so i read this book physically this has an average rating of 3.9 actually which is kind of high i think for this book um i rated it three star it has 347 pages and it was published april 1st 2014 so Okay, so the next book was actually an audiobook. I am going in order. So the next book I read was called The Naturals. This is by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the writer of The Inheritance Game, which I'm still reading to this day. I literally cannot, like, get through it for some reason. I'm listening to it on audiobook, but I keep losing it and I have to keep renewing it. So The Naturals, I read it as an audiobook. This book is about a young adult who loses her, well, it's about, okay. So it's really about a program in the FBI called The Naturals. And these are where young adults are pretty much learning how to uh, like solve cold crimes in order to find the perpetrators. And it gets really deep, like you have to think like the person and stuff. And so our main character, who I already don't remember her name, sorry. Um, she is recruited by them because she has a really good knack of like understanding how people are acting and like body language and she also really understands yeah she pretty much understands like oh this person's wearing a beige jacket and it's kind of long so she probably does this for a living but while she's in the program she realizes that um sh one of the cold cases that they have is obviously her mother's case her mother was murdered and she never figured out who did it. So she kind of uses this as an excuse to find out who murdered her mother. It's a fun ride. I liked it. I did not like the ending though. So I gave this one a four stars because I really enjoyed the book the entire time. I thought it was really interesting. It was very character based, which is another thing that I really like. I'm not a big like world builder. Like I don't really like world building. I like it like a little bit, but like I don't want like a hundred pages to be world building. And that's also why I haven't read House of, Sky or House of whatever, the Sarah J Mass one that's not Akatar, the other one. Not Throne of Glass, but the other one. House of Sky and Breath, I know is the second one, but I don't know what the first one is. Um, but that's why I won't read it because I hate world building for like a million years, I can't handle that. Um, so this one I rated four. Uh, it has an average rating of 4.2, so it is a pretty good book. I just did not like the ending. Um, this one had 308 pages and it was published November 5th, 2013. If you don't know, November 5th is one of my favorite dates because of V for Vendetta. And literally that's why Guy Fawkes Day. So that's the second book I read. 
So the third book I read is The Wives by Taryn Fisher. This one was kindly, I was allowed to borrow this from my friend Vicky. We switched some books this month. So she read some books that I owned. I read this one. This one is about a woman that's in a polygamous relationship and she doesn't know the other two women and the husband kind of keeps her away from them but then she slowly realizes that something is not what it seems and it's pretty wild i hated the ending as well to this one the ending was just like what the flip i don't understand um and i gave this one a four because i just didn't like the ending if i don't like the ending i will give it a lesser star if it was a really good book this could have been a five star if the ending was different but the ending was weird and i did not like it so i gave it a four star and the wives i read physically um it's by taryn fisher like i mentioned this has an average of 3.64 stars i rated it a four this one is 295 pages and it was published december 30th 2019 so that's that book so the all right so the next book uh was the only book i dnf this month this was a mystery tbr pick the mystery TBRs are really not doing well. But I read 250 pages out of this book and I was like, I'm done, it's over. It is Love Your Life by Sophie Kinsella. I hated this. I didn't hate the book itself. I hated the characters and I was over them and I could not stand them anymore. Um, this is a book. Okay, so when you see the cover of this book, you think, ooh, it's gonna be like an Italian summer book, Amalfi Coast vibes like this is gonna be awesome it's gonna be a nice summer a little romance pick this up at goodwill by the way and um it was not that the first like 50 pages were and then the rest was like bullshit um so apparently this author has some really really good books and i just picked up the wrong one this is about a girl who is over like tinder and goes on her like last tinder date and is like you know what screw this i'm not going to use tinder anymore i want to find a soulmate on my own um but while but that's kind of like a subplot because she's getting ready to go to italy for a week uh long stay to do a romance writing retreat whatever so she's doing a writing retreat she gets there they all use fake names and they realize that the martial arts retreat that's also happening that week around the same area by the same company is um, their retreat closed, but everybody was there. So they ended up morphing into this retreat. And that's where she meets a guy named Dutch who's like super hot and like, I don't know, super, I don't even remember what he looks like. I just know he's supposed to be super hot. And um, she, yeah, so they have like this whirlwind week long relationship where it was kind of cringy because there's a whole poetry scene and I freak or a story scene and I freaking hated it. I was like, what is going on? Like these people are like r ridiculous. Um, and so I was like, okay, let's get past that. Cause I think this will get better. So they finally, they both realized that they're going to be flying back home to, um, Heathrow and they're both live in London, which is really fun. And so I was like, okay, it's gonna be London. Like, that's fine. I don't mind that. And then you realize how much you hate the girl. What's her name? Ava. I hate her with a passion. And it's not because of her quirky personality and like her little quirky house. And like, she's like a little hippie and I freaking love that. But I hate when people push their agenda on other people and it's really, really annoying. So she's a vegetarian cool whatever love a good vegetarian but when you're gonna tell the guy that you meet after like two weeks of knowing them that like you're gonna be a vegetarian too and they are straight up a meat eater like don't keep pushing your agenda on them because that's just annoying and i was siding with the guy the whole time the guy's name is matt like the real name of him is matt the whole time he's just like this regular dude at least for me like he's this regular i mean he's a millionaire but like He's uh, kind of, his family owns like this big like house company, uh, dollhouse company, but he, you know, his house is very modern, sleek, black, white, gray, weird art pieces, which actually I would love, but the weird art pieces and hers is like quilts and books from the thrift store and everything in her house is a thrift store, which actually everything in my house is basically a thrift store as well, which I got. So that's why I was like, cool, like I get that. But like, she also has a dog who's very nice, cute little puppy thing, but he's ripping up all the shirts because he won't, she won't train him on how to like not rip up shirts. And like, he rips up everything and like everything is just like about the dog and the dog just does a bunch of stuff. And I'm just like, okay, like this, I get it. 
but she is literally so naive and she thinks that their relationship is perfect. Like they are so not meant to be like, and he just goes along with it and she's just like, oh yeah, he's going to be a vegetarian or he is going to be a, ve or he is a vegetarian. He goes, no, I'm not. It's like, we'll get past that. Like, no, no, no. If the guy doesn't want to be a vegetarian, please do not force him to be a vegetarian. I hate when people do that shit, like pushing the agenda. That's like telling a vegetarian to be a meat eater. It's like the same, or a carnivore. It's like the same shit. So I don't understand like what that was all about, but that's what it was. And I hated that. And he, she kept, I think the line that I literally stopped reading was like, oh, he's a vegetarian. I was like, I'm done. He doesn't want to be one. So why are you going to force him to be one? Like, I just don't like that. And then she says that their relationship is perfect. She's the freaking villain. I don't understand. She needed to go and I was over the books. So this one is also being sold on my Pango, by the way. <laughs> if you want to be really irritated the whole time reading, buy it on my Pango shop. I have this and the seller on there both. So go check it out. <laughs> okay. And then, oh, so let me give you the stats. Love your life. This was a mystery TBR read, physical read. Sophie Kinsella has a rating of 3.35 stars, which a lot of people had the same sentiment that I did. They were not meant for each other. They were just like, not it. She was not it. Um, I gave this a two star because at least I tried it. It was 406, uh, 416 pages. I read 250. I DNF'd it. This came out October 27th, 2020. And that's all I'm gonna say about that book. We're done with that book. Number five was the five star of this month. <sighs> I read Twisted Love by Anna Huang. It's the first book in the Twisted series. And I cannot wait for the second book to, for me to read the second book. I'm reading it on Libby via audio. If you guys have read Twisted Love or Twisted series or any type of romance series where it's dual POV and like you have a male growly voice in the audiobook, girl, that is another experience. Um, it was so good. <laughs> it was actually the story was really good too, but actually the smut was not that bad. It wasn't, it didn't take over the book, which I love when the smut does not take over the book. Um, but it's about, it's a grumpy sunshine, best friend's brother, millionaire, non-millionaire photography student type vibe. And I loved it also because I didn't know when I went into this book, but the, the, the guy, like the Alex Volkov, he's Ukrainian and guess what, guess what? I'm Ukrainian too, well I'm half. But like, I never see Ukrainian men like in these. I was like, oh, I'm rooting for you fool. Please don't, don't, please don't mess up. I really love this book. I thought the main, um, Anna was super cute. Anna, Anna, is her name Anna? No, her name's not Anna. Ava, Eva, I don't remember. And they all have the same damn names. But like, I thought she was such a cute little character. I loved her vibe. Um, I loved her backstory. I thought she was so like detailed. I don't know, I just loved them together. And I love that she was so positive, but not like in a cringy way. Like, not in a cringy way. She was like a real person, not like Ava from the damn other book, but Eva? Is her name Eva? Are they both named Ava? I think they're both named Ava. <laughs> Except one is E-V-A and one is A-V-A. -A. Weird. Two separate Avas, but I love them. Oh, I don't like the other one, but I love this one. She was amazing. And she's a photography student. She actually gives a shit about school. She doesn't like give up everything for the guy, which I really, really love. And she's still inspiring to be her career woman and a photography person. And I love that, or photographer, and I love that for her. And anyways, I love the book and the next audiobook is gonna take several months to get to me. So I'm gonna have to play the waiting game, but I'm really excited for it. And apparently they're all different stories. So I'm kind of sad I'm not gonna, I hope Ava, and I think her name is Ava. Ava and Alex are in the other books, at least sprinkled in so I know like what's going on with them. Cause like I'm kind of invested. Okay, so those were all the books that I read in the month of March. I didn't read any like fan fiction, Wattpad, anything. I didn't read any of that month of March because I was fully invested in these books. I think five books in a month is pretty damn good. I tried to read a book a week. There's one book that I finished today and I'm pissed that I finished it today. So I'm just gonna mention it, mention it because I did start in March. The Shatter Me series. I just got the second book because I am obsessed with it. I am not a, a dystopian girl. Everyone who I talk to, I they're like, what's your least favorite? Or like, not least favorite, but like, which one do you gravitate toward? You don't, you gravitate towards. I don't gravitate towards dystopia. Uh, I don't know why. 
I feel like it goes like a little bit with sci-fi and I'm not like the biggest fan of sci-fi which is weird considering that I love Star Wars and Star Trek but like I like watching sci-fi I don't like reading sci-fi so you know dystopia is kind of sci-fi-ish but something about Tahari Mafi's writing I'm gonna go more into it in my April wrap-up but oh my god it's like cursive to the ear like her writing is so good now i'm really excited to listen to a woven king uh the woven kingdom by tahari mafi because i'm really i just love her writing it's so freaking good like i wanted to highlight a bunch of stuff in the book but i read it a lot late night so i'm not gonna and i read it a lot when i go to bed so i'm not trying to like highlight stuff when i'm trying to get my brain to shut down but oh my god it was we're gonna talk about that in the april wrap up but and the other book I started in the month of March that I didn't finish is Assassin's Creed Renaissance. That one's a little slower. It's not as like exciting as Shatter Me, but I really like it still. I'm gonna keep holding on to Dear Life. It's basically the video game in a book, which I like. And I actually enjoy reading it because I understand it a little bit more. Unlike the game, like sometimes I just can't follow the game and I have no idea what's going on, who is who and what is what. But I really enjoy that too. Those are the two books that kind of overlapped to March or to April from March. So that's the tea. I will be doing a April TBR on my TikTok. So if you guys are interested in knowing what I want to read in April, make sure to follow my TikTok because I'm gonna put the TBR up. I don't know if I'm gonna follow it, but I'm gonna try to follow it. So yeah, that's everything for that. Then I'm gonna go into a couple of favorites. So I don't have that many. This month was kind of rough uh, for me mentally. But we're getting we're getting to that. Um, so the first favorite is obviously my Disney trip. I loved it. We went to Food and Wine Festival. It was super awesome. We got to try all this food. All of it's gonna be in a vlog coming up at some point. Um, and then games. So I have been gaming a little bit. April Harry Potter was supposed to come out. It's coming out in May now, so that's the tea. Um, so I've been playing Assassin's Creed Revelations because that's my favorite Assassin's Creed game and I've been playing it on my brother's Xbox, which is not going to be my Xbox. I just haven't sent him money. I really need to send him money for it. <laughs> um, I'll probably do it like in a couple of weeks, but um, I basically am trying it out before I bought it, but it's going to be fine. I don't care. It's going to be totally fine. Um, so I'm going to probably pay him for this in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I have not forget Kyle. So if you're watching this, which I highly doubt it, but if you're watching this, I have not forgotten about paying you for this Xbox. Um, but I've been playing Assassin's Creed. It's kind of hard. Like, I'm not going to lie. I'm not stealthy to save my life. So I'm kind of stuck right now, but I got pretty far before I got stuck. So I'm happy about that. Final game is Chef's Life. I have been loving Chef's Life. If you don't know, I'm a big simulator person. I love simulation games and I played Sims basically my entire life and I left Sims because I hate Sims 4 and I think it's trash. So I wanted to find some more games to play and I found Chef's Life, which came out in 2023. It's brand new. You're a chef, okay? And you get to make all this different cuisine. Right now I'm just in Italy and I'm hoping that I'm gonna get more types of cuisine because I'm kind of getting over Italian cuisine and French cuisine. Those are the two cuisines that I'm working on right now. Um, but I love it and I think it's so fun and I love it because it's also not timed. You can put the setting on where you can just cook and like not be timed for it. And I love that about this game because there's so many like simulator games out there that are timed and I feel like I hate that. I don't like when it's timed. So I get to enjoy the cooking aspect and still make like all of the goals that I'm supposed to make. So I really love it. Um, it's called Chef Life 2023. It's on PC, I think it's on Switch, um, Xbox. It's on all, everything, but I like playing it on PC and I use a controller to play it. So I love it, it's super relaxing. I usually play it like an hour a day, but recently because I've been so busy with everything else, I've been playing it on like the weekend. So I'm gonna play a little bit tonight as well, but I love it and I think it's super fun. If you guys like simulator games and you like cooking like I do, I would highly suggest this game. And you actually get to learn about recipes that you don't t technically would know about. Like I am I upgraded my spaghetti to be um, carbonara and it's literally how my husband makes it. So I'm like, oh my God, I can make carbonara too in my game. <laughs> so yeah, that's everything for today's video. Not a lot of things um, for the favorites part. A lot of it were the books. I've been putting most of my time in books, um, but I'm excited for April favorites because tomorrow I'm going to a cat convention. Well, today when you're watching this, I'm gonna be at a cat convention and I'm really excited about it. So that'll be my April favorites. 
but yeah that's everything i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did like subscribe and i will see you guys all in the next one bye bye